Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to use the ESP82601. The 01 one is the cheapest one that, that in the ESP8266 series. Um, I'm just going to show you right now. Here it is. I'll just let it focus. It's a little chip with little lines. And see it focused? It has a 2 times 4 header and 2 chips in this little squiggly line right here. For this project, what you'll be needing is a breadboard, wires, um, an Arduino Uno, and finally the ESP8266 itself. We'll start by taking the ESP8266 and I'll be showing you the pin out um, on the computer in a second, okay? Okay guys, this is the uh, um, ESP82601 pinout. And I'm just gonna enlarge it like that. And the only pins we will be needing today is VCC, URX, which is RX, which is receiving data, uh, UTXD, which is transmitting data, and ground. Let's connect it VCC and ground. Let me tell you something different from the ESP8266 from other chips. The ESP8266 uses 3.3 volts. 5 volts will kill it. It will make it overheat and possibly um, short, and short out the circuit board. So don't use 5 volts. Use 3.3 volts as the Arduino has. It has 5 volts and 3.3 volts right here. Um, you can see. The shadow. There you see 3.3 volts, 5 volts, ground, ground, and VN. We're going to be using 3.3 volts. That will be attached to VCC. As you remember from this, the 2.4 header, I'll. The bottom left, just wait for it to focus. The bottom left, which is this one, is attached to VCC. I'm going to wire that up right now. Take one of your wires. Attach it to the bottom. And attach that to the 3.3 volts. Should I got right now. And you take this wire, you wire it up to ground, which I can show you. As you remember, it's focus. It's this one, the upper, the upper left one. So let's wire that up again. And the Arduino has three grounds, so and it doesn't matter which one you actually attach it to. So I got that. And now we are going to connect up the rest and I'll, let's go back to the pin out. Now let's connect up TX and RX and channel PD which is connected to VCC too. So we'll, that's when the breadboard comes in handy. Let's connect them up now. Above VCC is RX which we will connect right now. Let's take a wire and we will pick up the, the chip and the green wire is VCC so we're going to connect the header above VCC and connect it to zero which is RX as you see on let me show you on the you know where the red wire is that's digital zero and that is the RX see? and TX is one which we will be connecting right now. Take another wire, connect it up to one on the Arduino, and put that uh, uh, underground, as you remember, is TX. Um, 
um, the black wa the white wire is ground. If you can see the white wire, let's see. That's the white wire, and we will be connecting it under the white wire. What did you call it? <laughs> under. Now we will be connecting channel PD, which is next to TX, which I will be connecting right here. as I connected it, and we will be needing to connect a VCC to the breadboard. We will use a plus terminal. Plug that in. Plug channel PD to the plus terminal, plug VCC. Instead of 3.3 volts, we will be connecting it to the positive terminal. And we will take another wire, connecting it up to 3.3 volts. that and taking that wire and connecting it to the positive terminal. Now we can do the coding and the commands. Now let's open up Arduino. I'm going to open up Arduino and for this project we will be not needing any coding which is I think is a good thing because coding makes me a little tired sometimes. And we will be the first thing we'll be doing to is go to the serial monitor, set the both NLCR into 115,200 baud baud rate, which is 115,200 bits per second. And we will take the the chip, disconnect the VCC, and replug it back in, which will is basically restarting the chip. And we will just, I'm going to disconnect from this um, Wi-Fi network because I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to set the mode to 3, the Wi-Fi mode to 3, and then AT, we're going to list all the Wi-Fi networks so we can connect. We are going to be connecting to Linksys, so I'm going to do CWJAP, which is connect equals exclamation point or quotation marks and quotation marks. So this is the um, name and let's once you enter the password we're going to move on. Now let's do the rest. The next thing we're going to do is AT plus CIP MUX which sets the multipoint mode to 1 then AT plus CIP server, which starts up the server, equals 1, colon AAA, and then we can open up the file, we can open up on the online, so we're going to 192.168.1.111, colon AAA, and we get this. If you close it, it says zero closed. Now let's move on to the next thing, which is chatting. Now let's chat with this computer, or the other computer. This is the new computer that um, you have probably not seen yet. I'm going to type it, I'm going to find terminal. And we're going to use Telnet to, to communicate. So I'm going to type Telnet. One, nine, dot one six eight dot one dot one 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 and oh oh yeah um you have to enter the IP the host too so let's put that to tell one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one 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 eight 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 we have connected and I will switch over to the other screen to show that it has been connected. So now I have a shared screen with my computer, and um, this is terminal, and we can type something in. I'm going to type in hello, and it will say hello right there. And we can send from this computer. So I'm going to type in at plus c i p send equals zero. Um, and how many bytes do you want to send? I'm going to send five for hello to enter. And we're going to type in 
hello. And as you see, it says hello right here. Now let's type in how are you doing today? And here I'm gonna type in AT. AT plus CIP send equals zero. This time I'm gonna send 20 to be safe. And I'm gonna say I am doing good. And good. And that was 20 points. And I'm gonna autofill for him. So I'll put in D. And you can also put in colon D. Um, colon frowny. And pretty much you can chat for unlimited amounts of time as long as you keep on going. If you stay on offline for too long, it will close it automatically. So this is the end of our first ESP8266 tutorial. And thank you guys for watching. And I hope you see you in my other videos.